Welcome to another episode of Glad Tidings. Welcome to another episode of Glad Tidings Ministry. This is Prince Shammai Vassar. Salutations to all you brothers out there laying your life down on the front line. Respecting honor to the apostles who taught us this word. And also to you brothers that's out there that's participating in this work somehow with arms, charity, whatever it may be, you still will get a profit's reward. So even if you're not out on the street, you still shall get a profit's reward. You still get that glass, that cool glass of water. Okay? But if you could get your black behind out there in those streets and wake up our people, the elect the first and foremost, because that's the only one that's going to hear this word. This is only for the elect. And remember, another man can't tell you if you're going to be, if you are the elect or not, because he's just a man too. All right, so let's get into, and I'm talking about for those of the circumcision. But the name of this one is going to be Beg the Lord for mercy. I think that's the name of this one going to be. Beg the Lord for mercy. We want to start with this. I want you to watch this video. This is my bad. This one. That's just one of a different falling occurrences hit us for. But I had another one earlier. Um, who's the other one? I don't know if they're showing this now, but I just had it in my history. Give me a second. That wasn't it. Right here. This is the video. So you gotta watch it closely. And let me just say this. What is the point of this video? How am I trying to edify the people? Well, I'm edifying the people that be more appreciate, to appreciate who you ignorantly call God and Jesus, who name is Yahweh and the son named Yahweh Shah. You get up in the morning, you put on your clothes and you sit there talking about what you're gonna do the next day and how you got it. You're ungrateful. All of you are ungrateful. So I want to give an illustration of how powerful the Most High is. You don't determine what you're going to do tomorrow. You don't determine nothing. Everything is in the Lord's hand. So how this video will edify you is that have you considered your ways? Do you, could get, do you get the praises? And are you grateful enough for what the Most High is giving you? The mercy seat is getting close of the door closing. Repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You better start listening. You better start doing this, um, following these Lord's statutes and commandments and praying for the Lord to upbuild your faith. Because these are some rough times, man, some current waves, and a lot of people is going to drown. And we're talking about our people first and foremost. It's getting spooky. So are you grateful? Because any of these atrocities have you ever thought can easily happen to you? Look at 
Look at that. That means just die. How that, see how that thing hit him? get a chance to repeat these the video so you can see this. And this could happen to hold on. This can happen to us anytime, anywhere. You ever thought about that? So when you pray, you better beg the Lord for mercy. Beg him. You better cry and weep for mercy because this is the days of wickedness, death, destruction, famine, plague. What they say, extra, extra, read all about it. Extra, extra, read all about it. You get up in the morning. Getting for the rest of the day. You might go to sleep and don't even wake up. How about that? How about that? He was young. He was very healthy. I don't know what happened to him. She was young and beautiful. She looked it all right to me. <sighs> all because you don't give the most high his son that power, that authority that he's supposed to have. You give him lip service. <laughs> That's it. I ain't gonna get into all that. You better watch that. You better consider it. Let's go to the, the Lord's Statue of Commandments. Let's go to the Bible. Let's first start with Psalms 86. And why did I pick this? This is a prayer of mercy, man. Are we really pondering on it? You ever work? Don't you need all the prayers? But a lot of you goes blind, so you don't see that. Read Psalms 86. A prayer of David. Bow down thy ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. Although I'm my, my God, I usually say Yahweh, that's his name. It's supposed to be Yahweh, but for, edif for edification, I'm going to say the Most High. 
preserve my soul, for I am holy, although I'm my, 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 for the most high. Save thy servant that trusts in thee. You got to have faith, man. But you people use the faith part, but don't want to do the work, meaning follow the Lord. You want to serve him the way you serve him. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Rejoice that soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul? For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plentiness and mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee. How are you going to call upon him and you don't even know his name? How are you going to call upon him and you don't even believe? How are you going to call upon him and you ain't got no relationship? How do you have a relationship? It says in the scriptures, it says in the scriptures, I don't know where it's at, you look it up, you could Google it. It says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. We're going to get that. It says, in the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods, there is none like unto thee. Yeah, because the nations have their own gods. That's why they're the heathen. They don't serve Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shah. And that's why we have a punishment to this day, because we left the true power. And that's why he had to bring his son back to redeem the so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and brothers of the island of the sea. Latin, Latin brothers, all the nation of Israel, scattered abroad, greetings. And it says, Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship thee for thee. Yeah, that is true. We're going to teach them, but they're going to be servants unto us too. That's the truth. I didn't add that. I didn't pick that. I ain't cherry picking. That's in the scriptures. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee. They will worship the Most High, but we're going to teach them how to serve the Most High, and they're going to be servants and handmaids, but they're going to pay a judgment, especially the so-called nation of Aduma, Edom. They're getting the double portions, but the heathens is getting that too. So this is the glad tiny news. O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and does wondrous things. Thou art the most high alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in the truth. Unite my, unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, my power, most high, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forever. Yeah, glorify the name Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Yahweh, who's we call God, and his son, Yahweh Jesus Christ's name is Yahweh For great, and that's the Hebrew. And who originally wrote the Bible? The Hebrews, which is the nation of Israel, our people. Are you a Hebrew? So am I. <laughs> that's back in the days. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul for, from the lo lowest hell. O Most High, the proud are rising against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul, and have not set thee before them. But thou, O Lord, art a God, forbidden, full of compassion, and gracious, long-suffering, plentiness, and mercy, and truth. O turn unto me, and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant. I'm a minister, right? Which means servant and save the son of thy handmaid. Show me a token for good, that they which hate me may see it, and be ashamed, because thy Lord has hope in me, and comfort me. Amen. So this is the reason why, why did you read this? We need the mercy, beg the Lord for mercy, and it's up to the Lord. To show you that mercy. But you better build a relationship with him. Quick, fast. And you better repent. The only way to get mercy. And for the Lord to hear you. You got to repent man. And turn around. We got to start treating each other better.
than what, how we treating each other. And your neighbor is your people according to their flesh who are Israelites. That's first formal. Start loving your people before you start loving other people. Come together, start trusting, stop stealing, robbing, lying, killing, making up false reports about it, about people. Stop doing that, man. Stop trying to find things about other people when your shit ain't right. Now let's get into this. First Samuel two and six. Get to the point. I don't know. And it reads, the Lord kill and make alive. He bring down to the grave and bring up. See, so the Lord kills and make alive. He bring down to the grave and bring up. The Lord make poor and make rich. He bring low and lift up. He raise up the poor out of the dust and lift up the beggar from the dunhill. So you can be poor, the Lord make you rich, whatever he does, it's, it's all behind the Lord. So build that relationship and that good rapport. And hopefully you may be written in the book of life. Remember, the first should be last, the last should be first. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lift up the baker from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them an inheritance the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. And then it says, he will keep the feet of his saints. And who is the saints? The nation of Israel, so-called Negroes, Latinos. West Indians, so-called West Indian, and brothers of the island of the sea. Those are our people. Those are the saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for the strength shall no man prevail. That's all we need for that. Okay, so now let's go to 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15. First Samuel 15. Verse 11. It repent me that I have set up Saul to be king. Because this is, we're going into this um, Saul, and then I'm going to show you why. For he is turned back from following me, and have not performed my commandments. So what, what, is, what delights the Lord? The commandments. Keeping them in the faith of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. Okay, so... Now we're going into Samuel, right? Let's see what Samuel did. Let's go to 16. And let's go to 15. And then 16. So let's go to verse 15. And it says, And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from the most from God troubled me, from the most high troubled thee. See how the most high can disturb your life? We started with 1 Samuel 2 and 6. How the Lord could put you up and bring you down. You ain't special, kid. And that goes to any and anybody. You are not special. But you are special if you do the most high's work. It does says in Deuteronomy, you're special people above all other people. But that don't mean nothing if you ain't keeping the Lord's statute of commandment. And you being wicked. The Lord will spit you out. You're just another nigga. That's why it says everybody of Abraham is not of Abraham. And then when it says, well, Yahweh, what, do you, what does Yahweh say? Who you ignorantly call Jesus Christ. He says that who's my brothers and my sister and my mother? Those who follow me and keep my commandments. That's who my brother and sister is. Those who keep my commandments. 
to all you church guys, man, that was never teaching the word and that just had your little your little um your little party, your house of hanging out and having a good time and getting money. The old days is it's 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 over with, kid. A lot of people losing the church, the church is losing their money. Anything goes in the churches now. Any and anything. Sixteen, let our Lord command our servants which are before thee to seek out a man who is a cunning player on a harp. A harp is very special. A harp, you play it in your house. A harp gets rid of evil spirits. When the evil spirit from God, what it says, who is a cunning player on a harp, which is David, and shall come to pass when the evil spirit from the Most High is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. So the heart heals. Play it through your house, man. And pray. Pray it like you're in a good instant. Frankincense. Sand um Frankincense and what's the other one? Sandal sandalwood. And play that heart. And meditate on the oracles of the Lord and his commandments. We need this at this time, man. And Saul said unto his servant, Provide me, provide me now a man that can play well and bring him to me. And that man was King David. Let's jump down to um, um, 23. And then it says, And it came to pass when the evil spirit from the Most High was upon Saul, that David took it heart and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed. It was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. <coughs> you hear that? Let's look up the evil spirit. What he means by that? For edification. And it came to pass when the, when the, when the evil spirit. Let's look at that. No, nope, we don't want that one. What is that? Wind, breath, not <laughs> spirit, breath. That's the most high name too, breath. Wind, heaven, quarter of wind. Side, breath, air, gas, vein, empty things, spirit. As that which breathes quickly in animation or agitation. You hear that? Spirit, animation, vivacity, vigor. What does vivacity mean? What the hell is that? Define that. Especially in a woman, the quality of being attractively lively and empty. He was struck by her vivacity, humor, and charm. Hmm. See, that's vivacity. vivacity. How you say it? Vivacity. vivacity. Okay, I said it wrong. Vivacity. Say it again. Vivacity. vivacity. What is it? Vivacity. 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 It says, especially in a woman, the quality of being attractively lively and animated. He was struck by her vivacity, humor, and charm. Mm, okay. Go back. Okay, then it says courage, temper, anger, impatient, spirit, disposition, a troubled, bitter, discontented. See, that's the spirit that the Lord sent on him. <coughs> let's go back. Now let's go to 18. 
1810. And it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit, the evil disposition from the Most High came upon Saul. See, and he prophesied in the midst of the house, and David played with his hand as at other times, and there was a javelin in Saul's hand. He wanted to still kill him. He still didn't repent. You know what I'm saying? But he still tried to hide the kind of under the umbrella of the Most High, but he still was wicked. He never changed because he still plotted on trying to kill King David. Let's go to night, jump to 19 and 9. And it brings out, and the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul. See that? As he sat in the house with his javelin in his hand, and David played his hand. So what's my point? He had an evil spirit on him. That the Lord can put an evil spirit on you. The Lord can call all types of atrocities in your life. The Lord can call all kind of hell things that's coming into your life. Hell not meaning in the hell, hell, that some of you think. Because hell is a situation or condition. But hell in your life. Infirmity. And the Lord is going to do that now. This is in the times and the days that we're living in. Okay, that all types of demons and spirits are out. Ooh, sounds spooky, but it's reality. And the reason why it sounds spooky, because I'm being facetious, is because a lot of you people don't believe. Ah, uh, Shemai, do you? How do you make you better than others? A spiritual man can judge all things, and therefore he cannot be judged. That's the man that's keeping the commandments and having faith. And he's he. What's that song? Well, I walk it, how I talk it. I walk it how I talk it. You live in how you say you live in. Because you fought these things. You try to come back, repent for them. Did you once do things? Yeah. But see, the whole thing is is the, the latter of the matter, not the beginning. That's why we get to repent. It's not the beginning. So I use the illustration of Saul. Okay? Now, we're going to give you the right side of things. And that is in John 9. John chapter 9, 1 to 2. <coughs> and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciple and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents that he was born blind. But he's saying, Why was this man blind? He he must have did something in his past life, or he did something he said, that's why he was born blind. Right? This is what they're saying. So Jesus answered, Yahweh shall answer, neither have this man sinned, nor his parents, or his parents before. Um, generation, because sometimes you know how to say generational curses, and then it says, but that the works of the Most High should be made manifest in him. So he didn't do nothing. But he was blind from the beginning because the Lord wanted to show his power, to manifest his power. Read it again. So Jesus answered, neither have this man sin nor his parent, but that he works of God the works of God should be made manifest in me. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. Oh, what was that? No, no, we keep going. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And he's still the light of the world, Yahweh because these scriptures, if you ever look at, read some of these scriptures, I mean, in these commandments and where you was in the Bible, all these things is good to edif for edification. All these things are upbuilding things. You can learn a lot from them. So don't ever tell me this was a white man's book because you don't even know. that. Anybody that comes to me and tell me this was a white man's book, I know they dumb as hell because this book is spiritual. And I would know they might have read a couple of things, but if they did read it, they didn't get the understanding of it. Because this book is really a divine intervention. 
This is divine, heavenly renting, man. And you won't know it unless you go through some of it. These things are safeguards, man. For the atrocity that may come in your life. These things keep you safe. But y'all don't hear me, though. So that's why he is the light of the world, because he says he comes in the volume of the book. And in the volume of the book gives you light. Because if you come to repentance, the Lord will put an umbrella around you, a protection. And he have his angels around you to protect you. So that's why some men don't get um, the same judgments as other men. I don't know if that's, you know, sounded right to you, but... Some people don't have the same kind of walk in life. Some people, life is upside down almost all the times. It's because of the things they do and how they live in. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of them are fools. They don't believe in the most high. And some people doing the best they can and they believe. And they work in mind how they live their conduct. And they mostly go by these commandments to the best of their ability. As long as you try, man, I believe, I believe as long as you try, the Lord will show you mercy. But I'm not, I'm just a man. I'm just a minister. I'm just a servant. I don't know. But I believe that he's a just um, power. And if you didn't have this, what else would you believe in? What else would you need to hold on? Because this whole world is kind of like, not kind of, is. Despicable, depression. Anxiety, anything bad you can put in is you can put in that. And we just get through the day, through the best way we can, and hope for the day our Savior come and crack out of the sky and things gonna change around. That's very soon. You see things turning on um, turning up. But what side who you wanna be on in those times? That's what you need to think. What are you? What what are you really about? Six. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation means sent. He sent his way therefore and washed and came seeing. The neighbors therefore, they which before had seen him that he was blind and said, is not this he that sat and bathed? He was blind, he bathed, couldn't see. Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, how were thy eyes open? How did you heal, man? We, we know you was begging and blind. And he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus, Yahweh shall made clay and anointed my eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam, and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Hallelujah. Amen. See, this is what the Lord can do, man. I'll tell you the story. While I was going to the city back and forth, for damn near like two years, two and a half, three years, going to the city back and forth, preaching the gospel. But be, even before that, my wife was hit with cancer. And the cancer she was hit with was called multibiloma cancer. And it was, um, they told her that she wouldn't live no more than three months. This marriage is going on 20 years and she's still alive and healthy and well. But you know what a fool would say? He said the doctors did it. They would say the doctors do it, did it. Or he would think that he ate some kind of special herbs and healed himself. <laughs> he wouldn't give no praise to the most high. He wouldn't think it's divine intervention. But through the spirit, we know that it was divine in inter intervention. And we get the, the we know that the Lord helped gave the doctors, but the Lord did the ultimate ultimate healing. He showed mercy. She was losing weight and everything. Now she's looking good. 
you know, um, bodies together, and he kept her around for 20 years, man. That's the power of the Lord. Do you believe? Or you talker? Or an actor? And I'm telling you, written. She, I remember she came in the car crying, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. We're going to serve the Lord. And praying, doing the best we can, and just working it out, man, trying to keep stress from them. They are still living and healthy today, and the cancer is in a mission. That's the power of the Lord. That's why you need to believe. You know, I re we remember her laying in the bed and can't even move. And I'm sure other people, other Israelites have these stories too, man, that they can confess and then manifest the things that the Lord did for them. And that's why we need to draw closer to him at this time and change our ways and build up, ask him to give us faith, build up our faith, because these are the times that we're going to need that. These are the times we're gonna need. These are the times we're gonna need that. So just remember, man. Let's go back to that video. We're gonna end it. And the reason why I want you to, because I want you to meditate on that, man. That's how bad he is. Let's just go over those videos again, man. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Traumatizing.